this video, we're going to learn how to find the greatest common factor of monomials, which are basically just expressions that have one term. And I'm going to show you guys two ways to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it by writing out the prime factors of each term. And then I'm going to show you guys a shortcut in case you want to use that instead. So let's jump into example one, which is 5x and 10x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out each of these monomials as a product of its prime factors. So five is a prime number, so we're just going to keep it as is. So we can't break up five into any factors besides five and one. So we're just going to keep it as five, and x is just itself. So this one's pretty easy. It's just five times x. So now for 10x squared, we know that 10 is equal to five times two, and those are both prime. And then x squared is equal to x times x. And now to find the greatest common factor, we have to figure out which of these prime factors do they have in common. And then we're going to multiply those together to get the greatest common factor. So I'm going to circle what they have in common. So they have this 5 in common, and they have 1x in common. So our greatest common factor is going to be the 5 times the x that they have in common. So we get a greatest common factor of 5x. And what that means is that this is the greatest thing that each of those can be divided by evenly. So you can divide 5x by 5x, and you can divide 10x squared by 5x, and you will get some nice answer. And now let me explain to you guys how you could have used a shortcut to solve this problem. So we'll draw a line right here. So what you can do is find the greatest common factor of the two numbers. So greatest common factor of 5 and 10. And the greatest common factor of 5 and 10 is just 5. And then for x and x squared, so I'm going to write GCF of x and x squared. What you want to do is take the lowest exponent for the variable. So x is just x to the first. So the smaller exponent is the 1, because 1 is smaller than 2. So we're going to take x to the first as the greatest common factor of x to the first and x to the second. And then if we put those together, we get a total greatest common factor of 5 times x to the first, which is just 5x. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it the long way and using the shortcut for all of these problems so that you can choose which one works the best for you. So taking a look at example 2, we have 12a to the fifth and 18a to the third. So we're going to start by writing out each monomial as a product of their prime factors. So 12 can be written as 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3, which is 12. And if you guys are having a hard time writing out the prime factors without a factor tree, feel free to make a factor tree on your paper, and you can do it that way too. And then a to the fifth is just a times itself five times. And now 18, a to the third. We know 18 is 9 times 2. So we're going to have not 2 times, and we know that 9 is the same as 3 times 3. So we'll have 2 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 18. And then a to the third is going to be 3a's multiplied by itself. And now we have to circle what they have in common. So they have 1, 2, 1, 3, and 3a's. So when we write our greatest common factor, it's going to be the 2 they have in common multiplied by the 3 they have in common multiplied by these 3 a's they have in common. And we just want to simplify this. So 2 times 3 is 6. a times a times a is a to the third. So we get 6a to the third. And if you want to use the shortcut, you can find the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 by thinking what's the biggest number they can both be divided by, and that's going to be 6. And then you can take the smaller exponent for the a's, which is going to be 3, so you get 6a to the third. So the shortcut is definitely easier and faster, but writing out the factors is a great way to help you guys understand what's actually going on. So I suggest starting with the longer method and then using the shortcut later once you understand what's going on. So moving on to example 3, we have 6x to the fifth y squared and 4x to the third y to the sixth. So start by writing out the factors. So 6 is 2 times 3. x to the fifth is going to be 5x's. 
and y squared is going to be two y's. We're going to do the same thing for four x cubed y to the sixth. Four is two times two. X to the third is three x's. Y to the sixth is six y's. And now we're going to circle what they have in common. So they have one, two in common. That's the only number they have in common. They have three x's in common. And they've only got two y's in common. So now if we want to write our greatest common factor, we know it's going to be equal to two times those three x's they have in common, times those two y's they have in common. And if we simplify this, we get two. x times x times x is x cubed. y times y is y squared. So we get two x cubed y squared. And just to show you how you guys can do this with the shortcut. So you take the greatest common factor of six and four, which is two. And then you take the smallest exponent for the x, which is three. So we're gonna have x to the third. Smallest exponent for the y is two, so we get y squared. So we get two x cubed y squared, either way we do it. And now let's take a look at example four. So again, let's start by writing out each term as a product of their factors. So nine can be written as three times three. M to the fourth is going to be four M's. N cubed is three N's. And P is just P. Now we'll do a similar thing for 15 M squared N. 15 can be written as three times five. M squared is M times M, and N is just itself. So now we're gonna circle what they have in common. So they have one three in common. They've got two M's in common, and one N in common, and the bottom term, or the second term, the 15 m squared n does not have a p, so we're not going to have a p in our answer. And I'll show you guys how that works with our shortcut. So our greatest common factor is going to be the 3 times the 2 m's times the 1 n, which simplifies to 3 m squared times n. And I'll show you guys how we can do this with the shortcut. So we'll do it down here in the bottom right. So the greatest common factor of 9 and 15 is 3. For the m's, we're going to take the lowest variable, which is a 2, so it's going to be m squared. For the n's, we're going to take the lowest variable, which is a 1, because n is the same as n to the first. So it's just n to the first, or n. And now the second term doesn't have a p. So you can either think about it as just memorizing the rule that you can only take variables that show up in every term, or you can think about this term as having a p to the 0, because anything to the 0 is 1. And you could take the lowest exponent, which is 0, and anything to the zero is one. So if you multiply three m squared n by one, it just stays as it is. So again, you can either think about it as this right term having a p to the zero, which is equal to one, and I'll just write equal to one. Or it might be easier to just think, if a variable does not show up in every single monomial, then you're not gonna put it in your answer. So either way we do it, we get three m squared times n. So now let's go over four examples where we're finding the greatest common factor of three monomials. So these next four examples involve three monomials, but they are very similar to the first ones. We're just going to have to do an extra step where we write out the prime factors for the third monomial. So let's jump into example five. So first we're going to start by writing out 21a cubed b squared as a product of its factors. 21 can be written as three times seven. A cubed is A times A times A. B squared is B times B. We're going to do the same thing for 15 A B to the fourth. 15 can be written as 3 times 5. A is just itself. B to the fourth is going to be 4 B's multiplied together. And we'll do 6 A to the fourth B to the third. 6 can be written as 3 times 2. A to the fourth is 4 A's. B to the third is three B's. And now we just have to figure out what do all three of these products have in common? So they all have one three in common. That's the only number they have in common. They only have one A in common. They've got two B's in common. So I'll draw a little shape like that. And that's all they have in common. So the greatest common factor is going to be everything they have in common multiplied together. So it's going to be the 3 
times the a times the b times the b, which is 3ab squared. And we could have used the shortcut, so I'll do it above the problem. So you can find the greatest common factor of 21, 15, and 6, which is 3, because that's the greatest number that goes into all of them evenly. You take the lowest exponent for the a's, because a shows up in every single term. We want to put an a in our answer, and that's going to be this a to the first, which is just a. b shows up in every term, so we're going to take the lowest exponent for b, which is going to be this 2 right here, the b squared. So we get 3ab squared. Moving on to example 6, we have 15x squared y, 40y cubed, and 10x to the fourth. So let's start by writing these out as the product of their prime factors. 15 is 3 times 5, x squared is x times x, y is just y. Let's write 40y cubed. 40 can be written as 5 times 8, so I'm going to write 5, and then 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, because 2 cubed is 8. And then y cubed is y times y times y. And now let's write 10x to the fourth. 10 is equal to 5 times 2. x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. And now let's see what they have in common. So for numbers, they only have a 5 in common. And all three of them don't actually have an x in, or any letter in common because the first term has an x and a y. The second term only has y's, and the third term only has x's. So for this one, the greatest common factor is just going to be 5. And if you use the shortcut, you should get that as well. So the greatest common factor between 15, 40, and 10 is 5. And then remember, if a variable doesn't show up in every term, we can't put in our answer. So because x doesn't show up in the middle term, and y doesn't show up in the third term, we don't put in our answer. So we just get a greatest common factor of 5, either method we choose. So for these last two examples, I encourage you guys to pause the video and try them on your own, and then you can watch me work through them to make sure you've solved them correctly. So example 7, let's start by writing out these terms as the product of their prime factors. So 5 is just equal to 5 times 1, so we can write as 5, because 5 is prime. m squared is m times m, n is just n p cubed is p times p times p. Let's do 7m cubed n squared. 7 is just 7 times 1, so I'm going to write as 7. m cubed is m times m times m. n squared is n times n. And finally, 3m to the fourth, n to the third. 3 is prime, so we're just going to write as 3. m to the fourth is 4ms multiplied together and n to the third is three n's multiplied together. So now they don't have any number in common, so we're not gonna circle any number. Let's see how many m's they have in common. They have two m's in common, so let's circle two m's. They only have one n in common, and they don't have any p's in common because only the first term has p, so it's not gonna be in our answer. So our greatest common factor, it's not going to have any number part, it's just going to be m times m times n, which is m squared times n. And I'll show you guys how we could use a shortcut. So the greatest common factor of 5, 7, and 3 is 1. So you could write a 1 if you want. We could put a 1 here. For the m's, the m's show up in every term, so we're going to take the lowest exponent, which is 2. So it'll be 1 times m squared. And then n shows up in every term, so we're going to take the lowest exponent, which is this 1 right here. So n or n to the first. And then the p doesn't show up in the second two terms, so it doesn't show up in our answer. So we get m squared n using the shortcut as well. And finally, our last example. Let's write these out as the product of their factors. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. x squared is x times x. y cubed is y times y times y. Let's do 12y to the fourth z. 12 is equal to 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 3. y to the fourth is y times y times y times y. And we have z. And 20x cubed z squared. 20 is 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 5. x cubed is x times x times x. z squared is z times z. So now let's circle what they have in common. 
They each have two twos. They don't have any other number. They don't all have an X because the middle term doesn't have an X. They don't all have a Y because the third term doesn't have a Y. And they don't all have a Z because the first term doesn't have a Z. So our greatest common factor is just going to be these two twos multiplied together, which is four. And you could have used the shortcut, which we'll do over here. So you can find the greatest common factor of 8, 12, and 20, which is 4, because that is the largest number that goes into all of them evenly. And then because x doesn't show up in every term, y doesn't show up in every term, and z doesn't show up in every term, we do not put that in our answer, so we get a greatest common factor of 4. So hopefully this video helped you guys understand how to find the greatest common factor of monomials. If you want some more practice with problems like this, check out the link in our description for a free practice worksheet.